manually start the recording. <laughs> Over there. It's too dark to even see you. What? Too dark to even see you. Too dark? The FPV feed. Blimey. It's not just your brightness on the screen, is it? Or contrast? I don't know. I can't see the camera right now. But the camera, the camera does better than that normally. It's not a bright sunny day, but it's not even partly getting dark yet. So, we're testing GPS hole. Now this one's supposed to be a slow yaw, I believe it was a left yaw, but I'm not sure, to calibrate the GPS. It might have even been two or three slow yaws, but we'll give it a go. So this is a left yaw. So yeah, what I can see on the screen now is absolutely useless. I can see a horizon line, that's it. I know this camera performs pretty well in low light, so I'm guessing that's just the screen. And we'll go one more for good luck. It does actually seem to be tightening up a bit. The GPS lock. Okay. I'm just going to try a couple right. If that has any effect at all. On the GPS <coughs> calibration. <laughs> okay, so shout out to Dronald Trump. Dronald Trump. And uh, Amsterdam Holland. Amsterdam, Holland posted up a schematic for the pinout from the gimbal to the quad. And I think he posted this quite a long time ago, but Dronald Trump pointed out that if you take out pins six and seven of the eight pins, so the big connectors at the top, the little connectors at the bottom, and they'll be the ones on the right. So you just leave all of the ones in apart from six and seven. Whoa. very so soft to control. Uh, all the pins in apart from six and seven and then you get everything you want apart from camera control. You still see the FPV feed is recording on here. You have to manually start the camera. I'd say that's a pretty good workaround because before I could not push the camera in all the way. Well that was my only option. Don't push the camera in all the way and um, not get any FPV feed, but it would get okay footage. Now, I stopped really playing with this one at that point because if the footage wasn't usable and I couldn't see the FPV feed, it was like you weren't getting things in shot properly or it was just too disappointing. Plus, there was a little bit of jello. Looks like my camera's a little bit off center. Yeah, there's a little bit of jello as well. And basically my dampeners on my gimbal are really soft, a lot softer than they should be and there's, there's a lot of movement there so any slightly unbalanced props or anything along those lines is is basically a, just shown really easily now that's that's the gps hold it's not bad doesn't doesn't want to fly off anywhere
I can't see you on my screen at all. Yeah, I can't see your quad on my screen, on my FPV screen. You're having a good old shimmy about up there. Right now. I, don't, I don't know. You're alright, dude. So it is reliable, but it's not precise. I think that's the word I'm looking for. I'm going to put it back in altitude hold. Let's get some smooth lines with it and see how this gimbal performs. Oh! That wasn't what I expected. <laughs> I seemed to seriously lose power as I got close to the ground then. We're still recording. Now this, ba this battery is on its last light and it is slightly puffed. So I don't know how long I get out of it really. Whoa! Yeah, it really does get its butt kicked by the wind. Power feels pretty anemic now. Yeah, just not enough not enough power to, to actually keep itself up. And that was full stick. But it wasn't flashing at me to say it wanted to land as well. Uh, that one stopped the recording. That's full stick. It couldn't actually land itself. It couldn't actually keep itself in the air. So yeah, <laughs> either my battery's just really past the point where it, it, after 10 minutes or so, it's just not kicking out enough power or it's just reading it poorly. Cause um, I don't remember being that anemic on power towards the end, like literally you're coming down in altitude hold mode and full stick was almost, you know, pulling it up but not, not properly. It should easily just ooh, come straight up. Uh, price of these batteries, checked them out the other day, 70 quid. So I'm not sure I'm really convinced by the, the gimbal quality footage and the FPV experience that I'll be buying another battery for it. But um, I will try and set out the wobbles on the gimbal and, and see how usable we can get this.